Eric here with Pro Rebuild, and today we're going to talk about the early 90s and later Ford Electronic Automatic Temperature Control, or EATC. These are the digital climate controls, not the three-knob manual versions, and they have several common failure points. So we're going to address all of those here today, and I'm going to show you how we verify the problem, and we also repair every single issue with these, and then we verify the repair. The first thing that we see is the least important, and that is the backlighting. We replace all of the bulbs in these units to make sure that they're all good. We don't just replace the bad ones, we replace every single one. The second issue we see is the AC compressor does not turn on. And if you can see this really bright blue LED, that signifies that we have AC signal. That is turning the clutch on. So if you turn this off, that turns off. If you turn that on, that turns on. And on a lot of these units, that light will be very dim or flicker, or if you knock on the unit or shake it a little bit, that light will change its brightness. This one appears to be working just fine. All right, now I've got one that will not turn the AC compressor on. So there is the light which tells you that the AC compressor clutch should be engaged. And this hit max AC, and you can see it's kind of dim. So that's not a full 12 volts there. And if you cycle through these, you can see it kind of flickers. You can bang it around a little bit. So this unit still needs to be repaired. But this would not turn the AC compressor on it. Another thing that we see that goes wrong with these is it's failure to change the blend door actuators. It's all vacuum controlled. And these have internal vacuum leaks. They have issues with blend door motors. Now they do also have blend door motor itself problems, which are an external problem, not with this unit. And they will have wiring issues. I've seen melted wires and connectors. And those typically stem from debris in the cooling ducts, keeping the blend door actuators from moving their full range. That extra load will overheat the wires, it'll melt wires or it'll blow fuses, it'll overheat the relay inside of this. It causes all kinds of issues, but we're going to show you how we test that these work correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the vacuum source. I'm sorry this is a little loud. Okay, so as you can see, as I select the different modes, the vacuum changes accordingly. And you can see the AC light is turning on and off as well. A lot of times these will have internal vacuum leaks and they will not be able to sustain the amount of vacuum that these gauges are showing. Now I have a unit that has a bad vacuum solenoid, and I will show you the symptoms there. So as you can see, it still turns the AC compressor on and off, but when we turn the vacuum source on, you see it can't draw very much vacuum here. And while some of them hold vacuum, not all of them hold vacuum. This has an internal vacuum problem. It only has one solenoid that's working. We test every single failure mode with these climate controls, and then we test again after they've been repaired to verify they are fixed. We replace every single bulb in them, not just the ones that are bad. We want these to last as long as possible. We have a very, very, very low return rate on these. It's almost non-existent. They all come with a 60-day warranty, and if you have any questions, you can just shoot us a message.